Meister Eckert reminds us, if the only prayer you say in your whole life is thank you, we say together, that would suffice. That would suffice. Welcome to Pentecost Pause for November 17th. We gather around the theme grateful and we are reading today from the book of Philippians. But first we pray. Gracious God, we come to this holy time and space settle our hearts and breathe into us so that we can listen to how your spirit may work for our good and the good of our neighbor in jesus name amen grateful 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 i invite you to sing with me grateful invite you to open up your Bible to Paul's letter to the Philippians, starting with chapter 3, verse 1b. B just means the second half of the verse. It makes sense when you actually open to it in your Bible. We'll be reading through verse 11. Philippians 3, verse 1b through 11. Paul writes, to write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God, and boast in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law a Pharisee, as to zeal a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law blameless. And yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. May the word of God dwell in you richly. Thanks be to God. In this portion of Paul's letter to the Philippians, he seems to be saying, um, he seems to be speaking of prestige, of his own prestige. He lists the various ways that he is of high status. He talks about being circumcised. Um, he talks about being a, um, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. Um, he's a Pharisee, which is um, of higher status among the ancient Jewish people than just kind of the common Jewish person. He speaks of his status, but he says, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. So I think this, um, though it's a little confusing, I think this is really a powerful message for us in 2020. Paul points to all these areas of privilege that he has. And then he says, they are of no value. Now, of course, he these points of privilege are points of privilege. It's not as if he somehow lacks or like let's go of privilege socially it doesn't him saying these things doesn't mean that um, others don't see him 
as a privileged person, and it doesn't mean that he walks around the world having let go of his privilege. Um, but he says, to me, they are of no value. And I think this is a really interesting message for us in 2020 because we are struggling right now in our nation and I think um, around the world with that sense of privilege and what that means for people of privilege and for those who lack social privilege. So what is our relationship with our privilege? When we, as a privileged person, we, I'm a, I'm a privileged person, I'm a white person, I am an economically privileged person, I'm also privileged in the role that I hold in my community, in our community, right? Um, my relationship to my privilege whatever I do, it's n I'm, It's not like I can avoid my privilege. <laughs> like I can't change the color of my skin. Um, I think though that Paul's writing here is instructive to us how we feel about our privilege. This leads, his privilege leads him to humility. This privilege that he has, he doesn't say, well, I'm a person of privilege, let me um, act with that privilege, function with that privilege, let me take, he does not say, let me do this and such because I'm a person of privilege and I can get away with it. Um, he says, "What gains, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. Um, he says uh, in verse nine, or I guess you have to read back, gosh, you have to read back to verse eight. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Well, first of all, Paul, he's writing from prison. So in this case, his privilege really hasn't helped him out. He has been imprisoned because of his faith in Christ. He says, "Being and be found in Christ, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God based on faith. He finds that his true privilege, the um, the, the righteousness or the, the sense of being right or being in right relationship comes not because of any sense of here's how I was born, who I was born to, the groups that I'm a part of. It's not my prestige and it's not my privilege. What that is truly a value and that makes me right or right with God. It is because of Christ that I am right with God. And of course, our relationship with Christ drives us to humility. Our relationship with Christ drives us to love our neighbor as ourself, drives us to work for justice and peace, instead of using our privilege to exploit others or to say that others don't matter. I'm sure this is obvious to all of us, um, but I'm struck today by Paul's um, wrestling with his own privilege, and I hope that it causes us to consider our relationship with the ways that we may be privileged, um, that it drives us to, that our privilege really is not as valuable um, as the righteousness of God that we know through Christ. Let us pray, responding to each petition. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express so the spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express so gracious god we give you thanks that in your eyes we are beloved children of yours each one of us god Help us become aware of the privilege that we have, the ways that we use our privilege, the ways that we exercise privilege, and God, help us to reflect on our relationship with our privilege, that we might be driven to humility and to the work of justice and peace and love. God, in this troubling work in this difficult work, please guide us. Your spirit intercedes for us 
with sighs too deep for words to express so the spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express so god we lift up our nation where we have had an enormous surge in COVID-19 cases. We pray healing for all those who are positive. We pray for doctors and nurses who are tired. We pray for hospital administrators who are unsure and find themselves between a rock and a hard place as they make choices about how to best respond to the surges uh, around the nation. We pray for wisdom, for discerning hearts, for all those who are on the front lines of responding to these illnesses. We pray for our whole nation, that you would guide your whole people in making choices that safeguard the health not only of the individual but of the communities we live in and our nation as a whole. We pray God for an end to the transmission of COVID-19 and we pray for wisdom in making choices that will help make this possible. We pray for those in the federal government and in our state governments that they would be guided by you as they make tough, tough choices. Choices that are not just about health, public health, but also the economy. God, guide them in these tough choices. We pray for educators and those who, others who work in schools and for those who work in grocery stores and in other places where People have no choice but to come into contact with others. We pray for health and safety for each person. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express so. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express so. God, we pray for those who grieve this day. In our own community, there are several who are grieving acutely right now. We pray that your peace that passes understanding would fill them. And we pray that you would give us the words and the acts, the wisdom to know how to reach out and care for those in our community who are grieving. If we are the ones who are grieving, God, give us your peace and help us to move through the stages of grief Give us safe people to talk with. Uh, provide opportunities for exercise or meditation or music or time outside. Things that bring healing and hope to us. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. So the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express so god we're grateful for your presence guide us this day for the sake of jesus amen receive the blessing may god bless us and keep us in god's love may god stand beside us daily dusk to dusk May God, may God guide us through the night and lead us forth into the light. Amen. Be safe, everyone. The COVID-19 cases here in Arizona are going up as they are across the nation. Um, please just be really careful. Take care of one another. We are still here for each other, so please reach out via phone call or email. Um, please, please be careful. And... Um, 
here at Grace, we do not yet know if we are going to be having in-person worship moving forward. We had a great trial on Sunday for the 12 of us who were there. <laughs> um, I thought it was really great. Um, but with all the, the cases of COVID-19 going uh, here in Arizona, we just don't know. So um, please pray for the council, actually, as we make those decisions. Um, we are hoping that we're going to have a dramatically improved live stream worship on Sunday. So please join us for worship on Sunday morning at 11, of course, on Facebook Live. So go with gratitude to serve God and neighbor. Thanks be to God.